Hi everyone, welcome back to Bell's Books. I'm Carly and today I'm going to be doing my very late January, February wrap up. Now, as you can tell, I'm still ill. I've got a bit of a croaky voice, so I'm going to have to edit the hell out of this one because I'm going to have to keep drinking tea as I talk to you. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say, I hope you're all okay. I know things at the moment are horrific. Everything's horrible. It's very stressful. And um, for those of you that suffer from anxiety, I know it's just the worst. So I'm just sending you all lots of love. And if we keep talking about books, um, then maybe we can, you know, keep some kind of normality. Um, so, yeah, talk to me in the comments below. Um, even if you want to talk about stuff that's going on at the moment. I know it sometimes is difficult, but sometimes it helps to talk. Um, I just have a cold. I don't have uh, the coronavirus. Um, so, yeah, I'm just a bit poorly at the moment. But I'm going to talk to you about all the books that I read in January and February. There are nine books that I read in those two months. Um, so let's crack on. So the first book I read, I actually started it in December because it is a Christmas book. I know this is way off talking about a Christmas book in March, but I read Christmas Days by Jeanette Winterson. Um, so I started this on Christmas Day, I think, because it is 12 stories and 12 recipes for the 12 days of Christmas. So what I wanted to do, I'm gonna switch this over. I'll put my tea in this hand and hold it up like this. That's better. What I wanted to do was read one story and one recipe every day uh, for the 12 days of Christmas, which I think is what probably she intended. I don't know. But um, I love this. I love Jeanette Winterson. And I love this book. The stories were classic Winterson, a little bit of magic realism, um, a little bit of social commentary. And they were all, so you had one story and then afterwards she had a little bit of a, a personal reflection, a memory of hers, and then a recipe that was linked to that memory. And I just thought it was just delightful. It was so cosy and Christmassy and lovely. Um, and there was some, some lovely recipes in here and um it's one of those ones that i think i'm gonna i feel like i want to read it every year so i'm gonna on the 12 days of christmas i'm gonna read this every year that's my plan anyway so let me just look at a couple of the stories because there were some that i read i mean i love them all but um one of my favorites was called the snow mama which was um a bit like a modern take on the bookmark on the snowman um, so this kid makes a, a snow woman and she comes to life and looks after this child whose mother is not doing a very good job. Um, and it was just, it was so heartwarming and lovely. And it was kind of a bit like you go to see all the other snowmen or snow women and snow children as they're doing their thing around this frozen lake. Oh, it was just lovely. Um, and The Mistletoe Bride, she did a retelling of The Mistletoe Bride, which is one of my favourite festive stories, and I love that story, and I love retellings of it. Um, and yeah, this book was just lovely, and it and I read it at the right time, I think, because um, I had some sad news in January, and one of my friends died, and the last story in this really resonated with me, because it was about um, dealing with... Um, bereavement and grief and mixed feelings that you may have around a person that is not like where you have regrets to do with that relationship um so it was just per it was perfect it was just perfect timing for this lovely lovely and we'll read it every year wait okay then i read <clears throat> White is for Witching by Helen Oyeyemi. I've read, um, what's it called? Wait. I've read The Icarus Girl by Helen Oyeyemi, so I knew that it, her writing was a bit weird, but I like that. I'm all over that. Now, this I picked up, um, this was my choice for my book club, um, and I think they all thought, like, what? <laughs> 
um but it was um very weird it had its feet firmly planted in fairy tale and magic realism it was very creepy it was a very creepy read so this book is about a girl called Miranda who has a twin Elliot and their mother dies and they're coming to terms with the death of their mother they're also um they're in like a uh, secondary school and they're applying to Cambridge both of them they're very smart Miranda suffers from a psychological disorder called pica which is where you eat things that are not food um so she eats chalk and plastic um and gets very thin because she's not eating actual food um there's a lot of themes going on in this book um also there's a queer a queer love story which um i didn't i don't think i knew that at the outset because on the back it says her best friend or a her best friend or her lover really um so i i like i enjoyed that very much um there's a lot of commentary on here on race and immigration because it's set in dover so there's themes of whiteness um like the white cliffs of dover miranda and her family are white her lover ore is black and there was a lot of connections to do with um how how people are connected to the place that they live the landscape that they're in because miranda eats chalk and she's on she's living near the white cliffs of dover 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 um and she's kind of wasting away because she's not eating anything proper also there's some really creepy ass stuff going on with the house that they live in so it traces back a little bit through the the women of the family who are you know, it's never really stated but they're all kind of witchy um or something weird is going on with the women of this family um and the house the house is doing really weird stuff to the people in this family as in it's containing them and it's super creepy it's, it's like proper scary um so definitely a weird read the writing style is beautiful um, I do like her writing, but just bear in mind, it's a bit bonkers. But I definitely recommend it. Okay, how are we doing? Another sip of tea. Next, I read... I get with the right hand. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Which is, um, you know, just a Harry Potter reread. And I'm enjoying it very much because... You know, I had, like I said, I had some sad times recently. So it's really nice to have a cosy read to go into and just get lost in the world of Harry Potter when everything else is shit. Um, so this was lovely. And it's quite nice as well reading these books because I, I love the films and I, I know the films inside out. So it's nice reading them again to see the differences that there are from the film. So this one was very true to the, well, the film was very true to the book. Um... So I think from, I'm on, uh, what am I reading? The Prison of Azkaban at the moment. Noticing some differences in that between the films. So things they've had to leave out because the books get bigger, obviously. Um, but it's just lovely, lovely, lovely to read these again. So nice, 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 nice. What next? Oh, then I read a lovely essay collection by the legend that is Rebecca Solnit. Um, whose story is this? old conflicts new chapters so um this book is split into two sections let me look at the chapter headings so the first section is called the shouters and the silenced which talks about the way that the patriarchy and particularly white male privilege uses oppression um, to stifle and hold down women, people of colour and the LGBT community. So it looks at things uh, like um, voter suppression. This is very much rooted in American politics, uh, by the way, which I know not much about other than they've got an idiot in charge and everything's gone to shit. 
like it has here but so she talked there's one chapter where she talks about voter suppression which is something i hadn't really thought about um so she was talking to uh people that go canvassing door to door oh sorry i'm really struggling with my throat and how <clears throat> a lot of the uh democratic uh people that go around canvassing for the democratic candidates see how m how much voter suppression goes on um where husbands are either preventing their wives from voting what who they would like to actually vote for if they want to vote democrat or they're just like completely discounting their wife's um own thoughts um because they're republican and they're a white man who has power and therefore they're trying to keep it that way and stop their wives from gaining any power in that situation um so that was really it, i mean it was really sad obviously and there's a lot of stuff where she talks about that you that you know about things that have happened but the second part of the book um is called openings and it looks at progress that has been made already like in terms because she's looking back over her lifetime of where you know where things were when she was a young woman and where they're at now she's looking at the progress feminism has made the progress made by immigrants rights groups by black lives matter climate change activists human rights activists and ultimately it's i found this to be a really positive book because um when was i mean it was only written in it was published in 2019 yeah so I think it's a response to the fact that we seem to be going backwards in terms of uh, women's and humans' rights. Um, and it's really disconcerting and disheartening when you've got people like Donald Trump um, in power where the alt-right are having a big influence and people are still being persecuted and marginalised. So she talks in the second half of this book about the progress that has been made and what we can do to move it forward and the and it's a very hopeful book because she's saying this isn't about individual heroes it's about solidarity it's about working together as a group look at what can be achieved when we when we pull together and stand up for everyone's rights and and say no to injustice and and yeah, it's just about pulling together and being like, no, we're not going to stand for this. And it, it was just, low. it was a really good read. I would highly recommend it. It's only very short. Um, some great essays in here. Um, so I would definitely recommend it. If you're feeling like I have been very sad about the state of the world and it's only got worse just recently. So if you would like some positivity, pick this up. Um definitely a book for now okay um that is all the books i have physically to show you so the next one i read was lara by bernadine everisto it was a library book so i've taken it back um this was only a very short uh novel novella which is about the life of lara who um is coming to terms with her difference. I can't remember when it was. Bear with me. I've written down. I've now taken to writing reviews. So I can remember what I want to say in these wrap ups. But I can't remember what time period it was. I think it was. It talks about her parents getting together. So her mother is white. And her father is from Nigeria. Um, and it talks about her parents getting together. And the prejudice. Um, and the discrimination that they've had to face as a mixed race couple. Like her grandmother, I think, was horrible um, about her father and just, um, it's not very nice. Where is this review? Oh my goodness, bear with me. Okay, apparently I didn't write it down. Um, but it it was a, a novel um, in verse, which I couldn't, when I was talking about it, I did a little vlog, a reading vlog for Cozy Reading Night. And I couldn't remember what it was called. Um, so the style is um, quite lyrical 
and you can tell it's kind of the precursor for girl woman other because she goes through her family history lara's family history to her grandparents um her parents and her grandparents and goes forward to her growing up and kind of taking ownership of her her own self and and uh you know believing in herself and it was just a really kind of positive powerful book and very very short so a very quick read um yeah i really enjoyed it um and i but it, i said in my vlog it felt a little bit like a, a summary i think because it was so short and it spanned such a large period it felt like it was almost felt like an outline of a novel um but would definitely recommend um and if you haven't already go read girl Wom go read girl woman other because that is just next level right then wait i've got some audiobooks to tell you about oh then i read um a poetry collection undying by michelle faber which again i vlogged about in my cozy reading night vlog that is a library book i've taken that back as well beautiful poetry collection about um michelle faber's wife who had cancer the difficult times they had um from her diagnosis up until to when she died and afterwards and him dealing with the grief of that heartbreaking um I would recommend you read it in small doses but beautiful poems i really loved it and very accessible as well um just lovely uh then i read the rules of magic uh by alice hoffman which is a kind of a prequel to practical magic if you have read the book or seen the film i've only seen the film i haven't read the book but um i really like the film and i like the fact that it was going back in time and kind of tracing the family history of the curse so um the what's the name what's the family name it's the owens family so um it tells of three siblings franny jet and vincent and um they are coming to realize that they are not normal and there's something strange about them um they're witches and they are cursed, their family is cursed. So anyone that they fall in love with will meet uh, an untimely end. Um, so you come to these characters and it's Franny, I think Franny is the oldest and on her 17th birthday, she goes for like this kind of ritual that's a tradition in their family where she has to go to their Aunt Isabel's house um, and they all go and trip off to Boston for this uh, for this visit and meet their their witchy aunt Isabel and learn about the witchy ways of their family. Um, it's set in between Boston and New York, and I like the fact that there was some like historical context in there because um, they talk about the uh, Stonewall riots of the sixties. Um, there is a queer love story in there, which is a bonus and um some of the characters i found was a little bit kind of tropey but it was just it was nice it was a lot a nice fun witchy read um and i liked getting a bit of the backstory because to practical magic because i really liked i really liked that film um there were some kind of minor characters that weren't that just kind of were on the periphery that didn't that weren't developed and you just kind of i don't know i would have i think i would have liked a little bit more of those like their their, their parents they you don't really hear much about their parents um and yeah like i said a little bit a little bit tropey um but a, f a fun read uh if you want something witchy um and yeah it was nice so the last two books i have are audiobooks um, and the first one I listened to was The Sewing Machine by Natalie Fergie. This is a book which has three different timelines and you move um, between them. So it starts in 1911, telling the story of Jean, who is working at the Singer Factory. Um, and it's, I think it's in Scotland, should look that up, I think it's in Edinburgh. Um, so it's all set around sewing machines, which is lovely. Um, 
and the workers at the factory are going on strike and it, so it tells her story she lives with her father but she's um she uh, runs off to marry her sweetheart and they move away then there's another timeline of connie who is i think in the 1950s she has a single sewing machine and she makes her living through sewing jobs for other people but also then she moves into um working for the hospital doing sewing for the hospital um and she stitches bits of cloth into a notebook and writes down what she like what the job was that she did for them um and then there's a modern day timeline um from a character called fred and he has inherited his grandmother's house and he starts to move in and finds um this sewing machine and the notebooks that accompany them um it was a very nice little story i found it quite slow quite slow paced very gentle if you want something very gentle and soothing um then go for it um yeah i just found it quite quiet and um yeah it was just nice i think it will probably be very forgettable but um a nice a very nice little read and the last audiobook that i listened to was la belle sauvage by philip pullman um i read and loved the uh his dark materials trilogy years ago i haven't reread them which is what i want to do now because the belle sauvage is like the prequel to Lyra's story. So Lyra is a baby in this story. Um, and it tells uh, the story through the main character of Malcolm, who lives in Oxford, and he goes to hang out with the nuns at the, uh, the well, is it a convent? He calls it, no, at the Priory there. Um, and the nuns are given Lyra um, to look after as a baby. Uh, by Lord Asriel and some weird stuff happens and it involves Malcolm being a hero so he goes on a bit of a journey it's like a quest um, to keep Lyra safe so he takes care of her um, and he is with his companion Alice who they were kind of not enemies but they didn't really like each other at the beginning and they've gone through this massive journey it's very dramatic and the audiobook is read by um Michael Sheen I love Michael Sheen I love his voice and there was a lot of dramatic parts where he was reading it so fast and I, I'm always listening to the to these audiobooks when I'm in the car so I was driving like oh, oh god what's gonna happen oh no um so it's quite stressful because a lot happens it's very dramatic um but excellent I really enjoyed it and now I think I want to listen to the audiobooks of his Dark Materials trilogy before I move on to the Secret Commonwealth so I'm going to wait for those to become available on my library app because I've stopped using Scribd um, because I can get audiobooks on my library app, which is amazing. I've got to wait for them, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, I very much enjoyed uh, enjoyed that. There was, um, as you would expect, it's set around the same uh, universe that Lyra is in. So some uh, magic magic things going on and some really nasty villains and actually i thought i i thought that the um his dark materials trilogy was a series for children or young adults but la belle sauvage there's some nasty stuff that happens real nasty stuff and some swearing of extreme nature um so i that can't be aimed at kids <laughs> um so i'm assuming it's just like he's he's written them for the adults that grew up reading those books because some of it's quite dark but an excellent read um, and I am looking forward to getting to the secret commonwealth so mm, wait my voice is about to give out those are all the books that I read in January and February um 
I am now participating in the Irish Readathon. Um, so I am currently reading Strange Hotel by Eamon McBride, who's also one of my favourite authors and someone that I am looking at for my PhD research. So I'll talk to you about um, all the books I've read in March at the end of March, which I don't think it's going to be many because I'm in a bit of a weird reading slump at the moment. Probably because everything's so terrible, but, you know, we'll crack on with it. Um, yeah, so I hope you're all OK. Talk to me in the comments below. If you've read any of these books, if you want to read any of these books, if you've got any questions you want to ask, or if you just want to talk about what's going on, I hope you're all okay. Stay well and safe, and sending you lots of love, and I'll speak to you in my next video. Bye.